This is your Chargers linebacker, Dan Henley, and you're tuning in with Chargers Unleashed. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jay Kepner and Dan Wolkenstein here from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, being brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, AG1, Aura, Mint Mobile, and Rock Solid Sports Memorabilia. If this is your first time tuning in the show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple, <laughs> and Apple Podcasts. Dan Wolkenstein is really con- combining Dan's name with Apple, and you get Dapple. That's what it comes. That's what ends up coming up. But uh it's been a minute since we have gotten a chance to do a new show for you, and here we go. Black Monday came and went, and the head coaching openings and frenzy have officially begun, and my, oh my, what a week it has been for NFL coaches. Whew. What can you say about it? And obviously, the Chargers are in the thick of this, being one of the now, what is it, Dan? Seven or eight? Eight. Openings. Eight. eight openings now that are out there. And we obviously have a lot to talk about it because the last time that Dan and I had any type of head coaching conversations, we were going through obviously the top considerations. And now that the floodgates are open and now that the Chargers can officially start conducting some of those interviews, a lot has taken place here over these last A lot has changed. A lot has changed. So Dan and I are going to make sure to break it all down. We're going to go through everybody that the Chargers have interviewed with, obviously with the biggest, most important name that everybody wants to talk about. We're going to save that after we go through all the other candidates just to bring <clears throat> speed. Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh. Yes, that's going to be coming. Right. Don't worry. Jim Don't Harbaugh, worry. Jim Harbaugh will be talking. Would be talked about on this show. But if we do not lead off with Jim Harbaugh, don't fret. Just stay till the end of the show. I promise you, we'll get all of that in there. But Dan Wolkenstein, real quick, before we get started with all of this madness, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. This is kind of like the calm before the storm. It feels like for I feel Chargers like fans. Already. I feel like it's been here for <laughs> a month. We, and put it half. this way: we have yet to reach the eye of the storm. The eye of the hurricane has not quite hit. We were at the outer bands at this point, but give it a couple of days. Give it to probably like Monday, and then I think what well, Monday is going to be what like the fifteenth ish. Then it's going to get real. But so, for so now. This charger, so by Monday, Chargers fan base will be Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt in the twister eye of the storm, just looking up at <laughs> everything yes. shooting around them. Got it. Yes, and we'll and we'll start and we'll also talk about the kind of time frame for when to start expecting some of these things to coming down with all the new rules and all that kind of stuff. But again, calm before the storm. I'm a little anxious just to kind of get this thing rolling, but the last few days in head coaching cycle, not even just in the NFL. Like, look what happened with Nick Saban. Like, it's crazy what we're seeing wild uh, in the head coaching circles. So, eight teams looking for head coaches. I'm pumped. This is an exciting episode because this could possibly be where we talk about someone who might end up being the next head coach of the Chargers. And there's some big names (laughs) that we're going to be discussing. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm I'm excited to get into all of this. This is what's making 2024 so exciting thus far, regardless of whether or not the Chargers are in the playoffs. Obviously, they're not. They will currently hold the number five pick. But as it relates to getting this piece of business done with a new regime, hopefully the changes that have been talked about end up being promised with new head coach and a new GM. And we'll be talking about the, the GMs in a different episode here. This is solely focused on the head coaches. But Dan, let's get into this. Let's talk about everybody that the Chargers have requested to interview thus far. Let's talk about where we're currently at in the interview process. Let's break it all down. I want to start with a theme before we get to like the requested, what has been shown publicly. For folks who are new to Chargers fandom, or maybe have forgotten, when we talk about coaching staff and we talk about general managers we talk about like the history of this chargers team and dean spanos and the way they operate and manage things jake you and i've talked about this a lot this team operates very close to the vest and they hold their cards very close and nothing leaks they make sure of that unless they want it to and so something to consider just because these names have been requested doesn't mean there aren't other names that could possibly be dark horse candidates that have been possibly been thought about, talked about. So when we talk about requested officially, 
Danny Rossini talked about this recently with Colin Coward. Sometimes that could just be a matter of agents of those guys want to get momentum for their clients. Some teams operate that way. Very public out in the open <clears throat> commanders. Also go look at what the Panthers are doing. They're casting a net to everybody. Chargers haven't operate that, operated like that historically. So I say that. To say just because there is nothing being said about the Chargers or you're not hearing anything or not hearing names that you think would be there doesn't mean it's not happening. It just hasn't gotten leaked. So with that being said, though, <laughs> there have been a lot of names that we have seen head coaching candidates that have been requested to interview. Some of them have accepted and already interviewed. Some of them are in-house. Some of them are not. But there's a long list. <laughs> Jake? Do the honors. I guess let's go ahead and get the obvious one out of the way. So we know for a fact of the interviews that are have either been completed or have been officially scheduled. We know that the Chargers have officially interviewed offensive coordinator Kellen Moore. Mm -hmm. Get that under the, get that get that out of the way. We know that their interview with former Bills defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier is scheduled for this Sunday. I believe it's the Cincinnati Bengals. Offensive coordinator Brian Callahan is for next Tuesday. That has officially been scheduled. Giff Those Smith are the one, already well, interviewed. Giff Smith, thank you, has already been interviewed uh, as well. So those are the four that we know that have actually either been scheduled or taken place. Now let's get into the ones that have been requested. So if we go back to when everything started on Monday, when this was allowed to happen, the Chargers had put in request for Lions offensive coordinator for Ben Johnson, as well as defensive coordinator Eric Glenn for their head coaching positions. They also put in a request to interview 49ers defensive coordinator Stephen Wilkes. I talked about Brian Callahan <laughs> this already. This is long. This list it is, is long. It is long. I'm just making sure I'm covering everything here. They also put in a request for uh, an interview with Rams defensive coordinator Raheem Morris as well. Um, and, of course, another big name that a lot of people have is their preferred favorites for this team, Dan, Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. That came out on Tuesday that they put in that request. And am I missing anybody, Dan? Todd Monken. Thank you Ravens for Todd Monken. coordinator. Yes, which was... Uh, you talked about Leslie Frazier, Patrick yeah. Graham, Raiders DC. Thank you. I think that is it for the head coaching candidates. You mentioned so Ben when, Johnson, obviously. Yeah, so when, when John Spano said that they were casting a wide net, I think this list has been a pretty good example of that. As but far as the casting. crazy part is, since that was said about them, the number of fish have increased. Like, yes. since then, that's the problem. Pete Carroll is now available. Yes. Since Mike then, Rabel. as of today, yes, Bill Belichick helpful. is available. Mike yes. Rabel is available. And these are huge names and change the landscape and i don't want to speak for you jake but absolutely change kind of the oh, ranking stack order. The name. yes it's it's changed my rankings for sure so that's a plethora of candidates requested we don't know how many of them have happened behind the scenes front of the scenes who knows but what what do you take what do you make of the net that was cast are there any kind of i don't know thoughts on some of those that you like that you didn't like some of them that you think they might be getting something out of. Obviously the Ben Johnson one doesn't surprise me. The Dan Quinn one doesn't surprise me. Both of those should have been expected for this team to be interested in interviewing. Uh, I think, I think Aaron Glenn is becoming a very popular commodity given what he's done with the lions over the last couple of years. When you look at say, Brian Callahan, that's another one that's a little bit, I want to say, I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily say compared to Staley, but has say kind of similar to like Tom, Todd Monken right now, or a Mike McDonald. They have those, it's almost like that meteoric rise that Staley had, where the up and coming, mm -hmm. the young guys uh, of, of this, this group of head coaches. Now, again, I'm not putting them in the category of staley to say that you're going to net the same results as you did with staley but i archetype, think if yes you will. but even when if you're going from guys from say leslie frazier who didn't coach this year 
last coaching job he had was with the Bills last year as their defensive coordinator, who has been a been a head coach or excuse me, been in coaching in general for a long time in the league. Dan Quinn, another experienced guy. I think from if you're working the entire archetype, and again, I'm not even talking about Harbaugh, Belichick, or Brable here, just in that net for what we know right now, that's pretty damn wide in terms of years of experience, head co- former head coaching experience, up-and-coming offensive coordinators. Take your pick. Defensive coordinators. Yes, and I preface this by saying, I know that a lot of people look at this and because... Everybody has their favorites. Favorite. Of course. Yes. <laughs> Dan very eloquently modified that favorite. But in general, making a decision like this, and I don't want, I'm not trying to bring the mood down, but you have to be prepared for a contingency that if your favorite, in this case being Jim Harbaugh, either stays at Michigan or goes elsewhere that you have a plan B ready in place. Now, me personally, I think that these coaching interviews, especially with now the fact that you have so many openings, you're going to hear things more ramp up. I I feel like these interviews are going to go into, into next week to a great detail. And I really think it could get interesting next week as it relates to one in particular. But I think in terms of what John Spanos had talked about in terms of casting a wide net based on experience, overall philosophy, forward thinking, this has been done. This has been done. Now, when these interviews take place, as Dan was saying, we don't know. Just because you haven't heard something get scheduled does not mean that it hasn't been scheduled already. We know we obviously have the rules to follow with the... uh, interviews for coaches that are in the wild card round and that have to obviously go through that before you can really get into having face-to-face interviews with them outside of it just being possible virtual interviews. So this is the timeline that you have to that you have to understand for the pacing of this and this goes is true for all head coaching openings right now. But in general, I would say that John Spanos and the Chargers are doing exactly what they said that they were going to do in terms of looking for a possible head coach. Now, do I believe they have a favorite in mind? 100%. Do do I believe that they're saving all their chips to make their run at a certain somebody next week? (laughs) Yes, I 100% believe that. Although, Although, before the last 24 hours, I think I would have agreed with you. But there are a couple candidates that have come out that I think, I don't want to say give them pause, but might give them like, all right, maybe there's a couple plan B's that we might want to kind of bring up to the fold and consider should those actually be plan B's or should it be a 1A, 1B kind of thing, which we'll talk about those new guys here in a sec. Real quick, a lot of people are asking, and Jake, you and I have talked about this, timing of this with the new rules and all that, when folks can interview virtually versus regularly in person, when they can actually make announcements, who that qualifies for. Let's talk about that. You mentioned the wild card round. Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on the day that the wild card teams play, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week is when coaches of those teams can interview in person. Correct. So this is when things start to escalate. On top of that, there's the Rooney rule where you have to have two minority candidates. I believe that's either gender or race. On top of that is the timeline for when you can actually make a announcement of your head coaching decision. And in that, there's if they're currently in the NFL or not in the NFL, which basically means everyone else and Jim Harbaugh, two separate things. If it's Jim Harbaugh, let's say they go for Jim Harbaugh. The thing they're waiting on, kind of the boxes that have to get checked, so to speak, would be they have to account for the Rooney rule. So that's two candidates that have to be interviewed. And obviously, Jim Harbaugh has to announce that he, you know, wants to leave Michigan. 
and a deal gets done. Once those things are are set, announcement can come anytime. Jim Harbaugh's announcement doesn't have to wait till the whatever it is, 21st, 22nd. That can happen as soon as the Rooney Rule is done. Just want to put that out there. Everyone else, there is kind of all those steps and timelines and things. But I agree with you. I think most of their eggs are in the Jim Harbaugh basket. Although, again, if they're being smart, that's why you cast the wide net. Whether that's because you're just trying to learn more information, understand what the coaching landscape is like right now, the minds of these different head coaching candidates, compare and contrast, you know, maybe do a little competition research. Who knows? But there's benefits to doing this. And then news breaks this week. The Tennessee Titans decide that Mike Vrabel is not part of their future blows my mind and then Pete Carroll Dan and I know a very passionate Tennessee Titans fan and if you have followed anything as it relates to the Titans fan base on Twitter there's not a lot of people that were happy about that decision and then you see how the organization went about making the announcement and the context and why? in which it followed <sighs> Oh, that was a bad yeah. look. That was a bad look. So Mike Vrabel is now available. I mean, we think he's available, but would anybody be surprised if he ends up in New England? I mean, no. No. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why he was fired, for being honest. Then Pete Carroll announcement comes that he is no longer going to be the head coach of the Seahawks, and he's going to be taking on like an advisor role. Which that part's a little wishy-washy to me because I'm not quite sure how he could be an advisor to the Seahawks but also be a head coach somewhere else. I'm, I, I wasn't really sure what to make of that because as they were pointing out, and he was alluding to in his press conference yesterday that, to say, that doesn't sound like a dude who's ready to quit. No. A lot, a lot and for of what he's accomplished for them in 14 years was pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Now, again, he is, I believe he's 72, 71. So, again, like, how long do you honestly think that he would coach for? I don't know. So that seems to me like that, that, would be, that would be like a temporary couple years thing. For context, I looked this up because I was curious. Like, hey, if he can coach at least 80, awesome. Like, the guy has so much energy. He could be the one outlier, maybe. Oldest head coach in the history of the NFL, Jake. Romeo Cornell at the time, Texas interim head coach, was 73 years old. George Hallis, the Bears, 72 years old. Marv Levy, 72 years old. Pete Carroll, Bill Belichick, 72, 71. So it's, so it's the oldest like when the running NFL backs history. hit 30. <laughs> That's like the year that everything starts taking. So how long do you think they're going to stay? So Pete Carroll becomes available. I love Pete Carroll for 2024, maybe 2025. But after that's a big question mark. And then on top of all that, after the Nick Saban news, which was crazy. Now they're 72 years old, by the way. Which and he's I think retiring. Which by the way, that also helps the Jim Harbaugh leaving Michigan, in my opinion. Like if he can leave, Jim Harbaugh can leave. Then you hear word, there's always been rumors about the Bill Belichick, Robert Kraft, Patriots thing. Are they parting ways or in discussions? Then we find out, nope. Parting ways. They have a press conference today. Emotional. Bill Belichick was there. Talked about his gratitude for the team. Robert Kraft talked about not wanting to go up against him as a coach, but any other time, he wishes for his success. So now Bill Belichick is officially available. So all of the candidates we talked about before on that request list, and you add in three juggernauts, historical titans, if you will. Harbaugh, Belichick, Carroll, and then arguably one of the best up-and-coming head coaches in the NFL in Mike Vrabel. That changes things. Not just for the Chargers, but for a lot of teams. So, now, 
the wide net probably going to get wider. How does that change Chargers fans in, your, in the comments? Let us know. How does that change your stack rank of coaches? Who do you want? One, two, three. But Jake, for you, we haven't talked about this. So this is kind of fresh out the gate. Before we get to the Jim Harbaugh stuff, because both of us had Harbaugh one, which we're going to get into Harbaugh and the updates and what we've heard. What is the new, or I guess, I guess two part question. One, is there a new number one? And two, what is two, three, four now under all of that? Number one stays the same. It's still Jim Harbaugh at number one. My previous list, it was Jim Harbaugh. It was Ben Johnson, number two. It was Frank Smith at number three. Now, obviously, the landscape has changed dramatically. And so, we were aligned on that, which arguably may be the first time we've aligned on one of these lists. On much of anything. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> on much of anything as it relates to this show. But now, with everything that has changed as it relates to these openings, it's Harbaugh, number one. I elevate Vrabel all the way up to number two, and I put that with an asterisk because... I still believe it makes the most sense that he's going to be New England bound. Yes. I would love for the Chargers to be aggressive and get an opportunity to talk to him because should the worst happen with Jim Harbaugh, mm -hmm. I think having Mike Vrabel as the head coach of the Chargers as a fallback option would be phenomenal. It would be I phenomenal. Love, I love Mike Vrabel. I I, and, I was shocked that he was that he was let go. Yeah, and this is and the outliness behind it was like what <laughs> I didn't what understand it at all. He's the outlier in my list because my original list was based solely because I felt that you needed an offensive mind for Justin Herbert and this team moving forward. Vrabel is the outlier in that. I feel like that is a guy who who's going to bring in a very similar attitude to what Harbaugh is going to bring with this team. Yes. He knows what he can get out of the, out of his guys that play for him. It's hard. It's it's rugged. It's you know, in your find, face. In, yeah, in your face. It's a little bit of a Dan Campbell type of an attitude that I love. It's just like he was the Dan Campbell that succeeded before Dan Campbell came in and kind of like <laughs> over dramatized it a little bit with saying he wrote the like, script on the on the kneecaps, you know, bite your yeah. kneecaps and everything like that. But Vrabel was like that guy. He just did it more behind the scenes and took more of a Belichick approach with how he did it. And Chargers so, fans know how tough it is to go up against Titans teams with Mike Vrabel. It doesn't end well. <laughs> doesn't go usually back end to this year. I mean, hey, you've been able to get around them before. We saw the heroics with the a year ago with the Mike Williams pass and that how dramatic finish and all that type of stuff. But my God, yes. Earlier this year, it wasn't pretty. Uh, and how would you like for Mike Rabel to have a quarterback like Justin Herbert? <laughs> Compare and contrast Justin Herbert to the quarterbacks he's I had. mean, hell, even if you took it to, to New England, you'd probably still be going with a new quarterback in that organization anyways. But to think what you already possibly have established in Justin Herbert, what a selling point, again, that is the one thing that the Chargers have above everybody else, at least as it relates to the quarterback position, is that's set. That's ready to go. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned the Pete Carroll one. Is he is he is he three? No, he, no, no, he's not three for me. Ben Johnson will go to number three for me. So stack ranking, it's Harbaugh, it's Vrabel, it's Johnson. That would be my stack rank. Carroll, I'd be interested because Yes, to your point, do I think you would love him for 2024? But if he's staying on as an advisor for Seattle this year, I, I don't I don't think that A, that's either going to give him the opportunity to go to a team, or maybe by the time that next season's over, does he even want to coach at that point anymore? And this then leads into my pinnacle of reasons of why Bill Belichick is not in my top three. He's still an outlier. And you've heard all these reports about him talking about relinquishing control not wanting to have any of that GM type of a model that he had in New England for so many years because we talked about how many, or the lack thereof, second contracts that Tom Telesco signed for players between rounds two and seven. Spoiler alert, there was only two of them. Bill Belichick had not signed a player to a second contract that was drafted in rounds one, two, or three since 2013. Again, we're talking about 
overall team building landscape. As a head coach, I am not taking anything away from Bill Belichick. He's the go. Totally get it. But I am reminded of a line from Moneyball where Brad Pitt is talking to the actor who's playing David Justice and he says, I'm not paying you for the head coach that you were. I'm paying you, for, or I'm not paying you for the guy that you were. I'm paying you for the guy that you are now. I just don't know. And I say that for a multitude of different reasons. If Bill Belichick was 13 years younger, this could totally sway my argument. It would. It would. How much <laughs> longer is Bill Belichick going to coach for? He's 15 wins shy of Don Shuler's record of getting the all-time wins. But outside of that, he's already accomplished so much. I see Bill Belichick personally, no matter where he lands, I don't see him coaching for more than two years max. And for what you have with this two team, or three, probably, yeah. What for what you have with this team right now, given its current salary, calorie, salary cap situation, and what you have to build it back to, that to me is not the long-standing relationship that you need to build with Justin Herbert right now. Yeah. And I, I agree with you on like, ideally you'd bring a coach in that, you know, could stay a while. And I go back to kind of some of the, the rumors and tea leaves and things you've heard on national media about like this chargers team and Dean Spanos wanting to bring like a new energy and an excitement for both the players and the fans and the organization. And I just don't think Bill Belichick brings that. Yes, he brings leadership. Yes, he brings proven success. Yes, he brings that cachet, all that stuff. I don't think he brings excitement. I don't think he brings butts to the seats. I really don't. I think he would bring butts to the seats just because of the notoriety. Very similar to what Lombardi did when he went from Green Bay to Washington. I think that that standpoint in terms of like grabbing headlines, sure. I, I, I think I think what worries me is just long standing sustaining success. If we want to always bring up the fact that Justin Herbert is having a new offensive coordinator every year or two years or going all the way back to his college and you need to give him some sort of continuity. Now he's had two head coaches that. within his yeah. four years. If you're telling me that Bill Belichick is only going to be head coach of this team for two years. First of all, you can't guarantee, A, that they're going to a Super Bowl based on the roster that it is right now. No. Nope. And two, even if those two years are up, and let's just say you made it to the playoffs, then you just have to start this whole cycle all over again. Every year you're going to be wondering, is this the year right. that he retires? And so I, while I believe coaches like Pete Carroll and Bill Belichick can come in and immediately change a lot, that has been wrong with his team. I don't know if that's what's best for this team long-term. Like, yeah, it would set them up for success, but then what do you do with it when they leave? So that leads us to Jim Harbaugh. So I'm with you. I have Jim Harbaugh one, Vrabel two, Ben Johnson I think I have Ben Johnson three. And the main reason I have him up at three is because of the longevity possibility. If we're just talking 2024 and 2025, I probably put Pete Carroll and Bill Belichick ahead of him. But I want to coach for more than that. And, I, and who knows? May, again, these guys, maybe they coach till they're 80. But that would be seven years longer than any coach in NFL history. And the I just thing is, Dan, is that Ben Johnson's it. Ben Johnson's been with the Detroit Lions organization for a while now. He's been through the drills that that oh. organization has had to go through and learning how to be a part of a rebuild, essentially, to now where they are today. So for the Chargers, in as dark of a place as they may seem, the bottom part worse. of their division, the Lions were worse than that. They had but talk about an example of a guy who has been with an organization that long, been part of a culture change. Yes. He's experienced it. I believe that on top of longevity, he could bring that to this team. So that leads us to the man of the hour that everyone literally in, 
I guess now eight organizations are waiting to hear what happens. Although maybe I think a couple of organizations have said they don't want Jim Harbaugh. It's probably it's probably narrowed down to realistically to two. So Jim Harbaugh, everyone is you know patiently awaiting. I'm sure he's somewhere having pina coladas and enjoying time with his family after the sunset that he sailed on after that championship win. Which, by the way, kudos to Jim Harbaugh. Shout out to, to Jim. And now you wait. Waiting the timing of this. Yeah, the wedding game sucks. <laughs> and I'm sure he's loving it. And I'm sure he's loving it. And there's no, I mean, there's no reason for him to hurry. Uh, and he deserves this. Like, he just won a national championship from the team, the organization that he loves in his heart, his entire family. And what he did with that Michigan team, epic. You've seen betting lines go crazy skewed towards the Chargers. I saw some numbers as high as minus 300. I thought minus 200. That's what I was going to ask. Like, what it, I forget what it opened like after the national championship. I think it was like game. plus 300. That. Now it's down to like minus 170. And it's and like just in the last few very years. big gap between what his is and the next odds. You're seeing reports of, I mean, basically everybody is saying it seems like it's the Chargers. That makes the most sense. That's where he wants to go. That's what the Chargers are looking for. They want to, you know, fix the, you know, the the cloud they have over them about being cheap. And they want to bring someone in here that can restore you know, all that, right? Um, it's interesting now that these names are available like watching some of these teams that are kind of jog- jockeying for position do you believe that the charge there was something today that came out with Colin Coward and Diana Rossini where basically it was said that Jim Harbaugh, they believe, or she believes, wants the Chargers job. That's the one he wants. But the Chargers are, again, you know, casting the wide net, but almost taking a pause and kind of evaluating things. And Colin Coward came out and said that there's some kind of, um, I don't say riff, but there's two sides of, or maybe it's confliction of which way they want to go. From a leadership perspective, which in my eyes, that kind of sounds like maybe Dean Spanos is just trying to make sure that he's making the right decision here. But if as you know, as as painful as this waiting game is, if we rewind back to championship game Monday and we go to today, tomorrow, Saturday, nothing's changed. In the Jim Harbaugh sphere, nothing's changed. But because of all the other news, it starts making the mind wonder and wander. But it's hard <laughs> to, to remember the perspective. Every team is needing a head coach. All eight teams are needing a head coach. Jim Harbaugh, we don't even know if he's going to go to one of them. But if he is... Who knows? There are rumors that the Chargers and him already met and already have a deal being worked on. Now, that's not an announcement. That's not a decision. That's all crafting, drafting. But who knows? Like, the waiting game sucks. But, Jake, I think you and I both agree Monday seems like a great day, start of the week. For Jim Harbaugh to put out a bombshell report, or we hear things from Schefter or whoever. Next week's going to be crazy. I thought after the national championship game that it was going to be at least a week before we heard anything on the next steps as it relates to Jim. And whether that's what the Chargers do, what the Raiders do, his ultimate decision whether to stay or go from Michigan, I felt like we were going to have to wait a week regardless. Now, to your point, because he doesn't fall under that circum the the rules of when you can, because he's not currently in the NFL. Deployed, that's right. You can figure out ways to talk to him to his representation at any point in time. And from what we know, especially obviously the fact that the Chargers 
head coach and GM vacancies have had an interim title now for the better part of a month, I would assume that they've been doing their due diligence. My, However, I will say this, Dan, my favorite headline came from not even something related to the Chargers, I guess indirectly related to the Chargers, but <laughs> to hear that Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross said that he <laughs> will stop at nothing to keep Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if there's insider information as far as well, what may be out there as far as what he's do? going to do, but apparently Stephen Ross is going to do is going to do at a full court press to keep Jim Harbaugh out of the NFL. <laughs> just love, I loved that. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so apparently, man. Is, but as it relates to Harbaugh, Dan, has this has this four days? Got me a little nervous. Yeah, <laughs> has it made, has it made you have, more or less yeah. con, uh, convinced that they're going to get him? I don't think it swayed me any more than the other, but just again, the waiting game, I think, is what <laughs> cranks up the blood pressure a little bit. You also hear some other stories from the Raiders that they officially are going to have an interview with Ed Dodds for their GM position, which Jim Harbaugh and Ed Dodds have a prior relationship incidentally with the Raiders going way back when. So you see those kind of tea leaves and it pricks up your ears a little bit as far as attention goes and timeline goes. And then obviously now that we have everything escalated to eight open positions, I think what the Chargers have done during this week has been the right thing to do in terms of their due diligence to have contingency plans, backup plans, casting that wide net that they said that they were going to do. And again, I'm not trying to bring the mood down on the Jim Harbaugh bandwagon. But no, should but I think worst, it's it's you should be doing this should yes. the worst possible scenario end up happening. Because imagine if it did and you're sitting there with everything on Jim Harbaugh and you're left with candidates that nobody thought you'd be hiring. Like Here's imagine the that oh, optic. Sorry, yeah. Yes. And I will say this if I remember when Spanos was talking about this in terms of their GM and head coaching search being simultaneous, that one necessarily wasn't going to dictate the other. Tom Telesco was hired first when he was brought in in 2013, and then they began their coaching search to figure out which ones would meld. I feel like Jim Harbaugh would be the exception to any of the other head coaches personally yep. to say that you would do that hire first. And then based on the prior relationships that we knew about with him in San Francisco, you'd say, okay, from a GM standpoint, who can we pair with you? Yeah. And what, and whether you actually hire Jim Harbaugh, like officially, or whether you like know who the guys are or gals are that he would like to work with. And then you target those people. Like there's ways to do it to where you can still go for it. You can still hire technically a GM first, but I'm pretty confident the Chargers have to know. <laughs> they, they have to know whether that's with directly Jim Harbaugh or with his agent, Don Yee. Like, Don Yee's a savant with this stuff. So I think, and this is not just the Chargers, like any team that is serious or that Jim Harbaugh is serious about possibly joining, they're not going to just go willy nilly. So, The other part, and again, this is not us trying to bring the mood down. This is also just the reality of things. Like there is a certain narrative and a certain skepticism, if you will, surrounding the Chargers because of the history that they have had with hiring coaches for the most part or GM for the most part. And there are reports where people are wondering, like, kind of a believe it I'll wait till I see it there's a reason why a lot of Chargers fans are really nervous and that's not because this team does this, has done this all the time and they've hit it out of the park that's what I'm saying like so until they do make the actual change I understand the angst and the caution 
behind the optimism, if there's even optimism for some people. Because, and Jake, you know, you're the, the pessimist of the two of us. Chargers fans have been jaded by things that they yeah. thought were going to happen and it oh, didn't yeah. happen. Whether that's players, games, executives, coaches, decision, you name it. So I understand why Chargers fans are a little in their feelings right now. It's going to be a wild ride. Again, I think this happens probably, I'm going to say, by the time January 23rd, we'll know. If it's Jim Harbaugh, it's before that. If it's Jim Harbaugh, I think it's next week. But we'll find out. So that's the latest coaching landscape. Again, eight vacancies. Newly added Pete Carroll. Bill Belichick, Mike Vrabel, on top of all the requests. We don't know the interviews. Again, Rooney rules what we're looking for for Jim Harbaugh. That has to get up, like legally, that has to get done before you can even whisper an announcement of Jim Harbaugh. Now we wait. Now we wait. So, Exciting, nervous, anxious, scared times for Chargers fans and for fans of a lot of teams right now. We're just talking about the teams that aren't in the playoffs, let alone the teams that are in the playoffs, who also could possibly have head coaching vacancies depending on how those teams do in the playoffs. Talking about the Cowboys. Do they move on from Mike McCarthy? You hear swirls about Sirianni in Philadelphia, which is crazy. But... Crazy times. Jake, anything else you want to tell our great friends before we get out of here? I guess if you would have told me, if you would have given me four coaches, Matt Eberflus, Vrabel, Pete Carroll, Belichick, <laughs> who's the one that's guaranteed to not be on their team next year? I would have said Eberflus 100%. <laughs> Straight to the bank. So, didn't have that one on my bingo card, but in general, it's just been, it's been a hell of a week with this NFL coaching drama. It has, but we'll with, we'll be with you every step of the way. Uh, so tune in next time as we go through maybe an update on head coaches. Uh, but the next episode actually is going to be all things general manager candidates. Where are we at with those? We'll talk to you about that on the next Chargers Unleashed.